Hello, everybody. This is Helen, and I teach at the Dorothy Benson Senior Services Center. And this is the last class of our MOLA, our reverse applique stitching. And I wanted to show you how I put the binding on this one. Okay. This one, um, I had not finished it. I started it probably two years ago. And I just, it, it wasn't making me happy. And I finally realized why. It's because I didn't like the orange um, embroidery I put on the fish. So I'm actually taking that out. I'm just removing all that. And I will add some other color there. But, um, you know, it's your creation. You can undo stuff, especially if this is just a running stitch anyway. Um, so I'll be taking these stitches out and replacing it with something else. Okay, as far as the binding, um, I still don't have my cotton fabric. So I had a piece of linen and it's not the best color, but I put it on here. But what I did was I just slapped it on the back like this, okay? And then I folded it over. So I'm gonna take this part out so you can see. So I just put it on the back. I pinned it so you know it will be the same size, and I folded it twice right here, okay. And then I'm just binding it like this. I mean, you can do it any way you want. Um, because I wasn't finished, and after I, I um, put this on, I decided to do a little bit more stitching, like the white lines here. So it shows on the other side. If I continue to do a lot of stitching, and if I have a lot of stitches showing on the back side, um, I have the choice of putting another piece of fabric around here and hiding all that. But um, if, if it's just going to be a wall hanging, I don't think that's that important. So I will continue to work on this um, and adding more colors to it. And I think once I add, add more stitching to it, it's going to look pretty good. OK? So uh, one of the things that I was too lazy to get my um, seam ripper. So I was using these very sharp snips. Yeah, don't do that because I accidentally cut the fabric on some places. All right, so this, the seam ripper is a good thing to use. All right, so I'm just going to remove these and then I'll decide later what color. It's kind of like, um, because this isn't planned ahead, it's kind of like uh, painting. You know, you paint a part of your canvas and then you decided uh, it didn't go too well with the other parts. So you can, re you know, you remove it. Okay. So I'm removing this and it, it's leaving little needle holes, but that's okay. Cause once I start stitching or these needle holes should disappear. Let me see, I think the, um. Yeah, they'll disappear if I, I can press them. Um, what it is, is the embroidery needle was so thick. It kind of left a big hole there, but it'll disappear. So I'll just continue to remove this. And then, you know, like I said, I probably started this two years ago. So, you know, I'll just keep working on it, working on it, and it's gonna evolve, okay? So like I said before, um, you know, who, the subject matter you're going to choose is going to be, um, it could be something around you. For example, um, like um, I think I told you last week that I've been watching a lot of African webcams, watching the animals, and I especially like those antelope like horned uh, animals because they're beautiful. So that's what inspired me to do this. Now, I didn't like the browns. So um, I wasn't going to work on it anymore, but I, I couldn't, I didn't have time to go buy any uh, cotton fabric. So I decided I'll just keep challenging myself with this. And what I did was um, I started adding some stitches to it, okay? So here on the horns, I did cut some fabric out on the horns. 
and it, it didn't do that much. So I started adding the chain stitch. I think we went over the chain stitch last time. Now these stitches are all basting stitches. Okay, they're just temporary. These are, these are gonna stay. Okay, the thicker ones are gonna stay. And then I added some more um, stitches to the face. Okay, I only did one side of the face so far. Um, and, you know, I'm just gonna keep going. And um, since I only have three layers of fabric, yeah, I only have three layers. After I did the eye, it didn't look too good. It just looked like it didn't, you know, it just was an empty eye. So I patched, added a little patch. I didn't have black, but I had this dark navy. So I put, basted that on here, just on the eye area cut open the eye area. So I'm kind of curious to see what that's going to look like. Um, since it's such a small area, let me see if I can stitch that up really good. Let's see. So um, after doing this antelope-like creature, I got to thinking, you know, I don't put up Christmas decorations, but since my grandkids are coming before Christmas for a short visit, maybe I should make like a, a holiday themed piece. Um, it might be a Christmas tree, you know, or something. But if I did like a Christmas tree, it might be fun to kind of make it so that, um, there might be like, you know, these peekaboo places. You maybe, I might have some ornaments on the tree and um, if it, that can be open and there might be something hidden on the inside, you know, just a surprise. Um, so that might be option. And then when the holidays are over, I can just um, roll it up and then, put it away. So that might be a fun thing to do. So I'm just going to slip stitches on here, see if this little bit of navy blue fabric is going to help with the eye. Now, the cool thing about this um, MOLA technique is, this MOLA idea is, you know, you can change your design as you go along. Uh, you, like I said, you can add embroidery stitching and beads and stuff like that. So I'm just slip stitching this on here and using my needle to kind of tuck in the edges. And don't forget, I clipped it, clipped the circle and um, tucked in the raw edge under here. So this reverse applique is, is really just the reverse of regular applique. Um, I don't see why you can't applique stuff onto a finished piece too. Add a little bit more interest. Let's see if we can continue this. And, and then once I get this uh, eye area, eye done, I'm gonna to have to remove the basting stitches. However, um, I've got that big flap. I'll have to trim the fabric in the back. I don't need all that excess fabric. I just put a big patch there just to make sure I cover the hole. Okay. Get almost there. Tuck this raw edge in. Now this um, kind of orangey color fabric is, it has a print to it actual, you know, like a model print. Um, I have, uh, and then, and then this, this piece has a little print on there too. Um, and then this orangey piece has a print. 
the orangey piece kind of reads as a solid. Um, I'm not sure how print fabrics are going to work with um, this method. Maybe on a large background area, it'll be okay, but on small detailed areas, it, it might interfere with the design. Okay, so I got the eye, oops, I got the eye done. So on the back side, you can see the eye, you know, just a, a little bit of stitching. So. I can trim close to this, you know, and get rid of this basting stitch. So let's see, let's go ahead and do that. I have to remove the basting stitch and basting stitch is always a temporary stitch, just big stitches that hold the piece together. These snips are so sharp, I have to be careful. I'm, I don't cut something else with that. Okay, so I took the basting stitch out. Now I'm gonna see if I can remove some of this excess. Make sure I don't cut. And if you do accidentally cut the fabric underneath, you know, you can always um, change your design a bit maybe and add, you know, make it part, add, a, add a, another piece of fabric or something and make it part of your design. Okay, so I've got that little, I kind of have it. So hopefully when I put backing fabric, that'll um, stabilize it. All right, so this is the front and I gave it an eyeball and I think it's much, much better. Um, it's more obvious in real life, probably too bright here. Move this a little bit. Yeah, so that's a lot better than what it was before. Okay, so I still have to do something here. I can't remember if that, I actually looked at a real picture of a, um, it's one of these animals and based it on that, um, the horn's a little bit different. So on the horn, what I did was I just added chain stitching to it and I need to keep going, okay? All the way to the top and I'm outlining the background. Now, when I did this, I just realized I had this massive amount of brown background. So um, I tried my hand at feather stitching, which is a type of embroidery stitch. So it kind of, I was trying to make it look like um, the grasslands in Africa. So it kind of looks like that. And I, I'm working on using different shades of green. Okay, so some are gonna look like dried grass and some. So I'm gonna continue that. Um, and I do have to look at a, you can probably look online or look on YouTube, but I did have to look at a book to remember how to do this because I always get confused with this stitch. It's just, uh, I just find it a little bit confusing. This is um, a book that, you know, you can probably find any kind of book, but I just happened to have this. And, um, and it's easier to, you know, it's easy to open because of the spiral binding and it's not that big. So I just used this stitch and I think it's called the feather. Yeah, feather stitch, all right? Cause it kind of looks like grass or it could look like coral. I mean, it can look like a bunch of different things. So I'll show you how that's done. Let me see here, I need some. Um, I need some, I, I've lost it. Okay, let me go get my embroidery needle and the, you will need to use an embroidery needle. Okay, let's see, where did I put it? So, and this kind of, actually working on the mola today is a good idea because it's kind of cloudy and raining off and on here. All right. Um, basically, I have to remember 
and this is just me, I think, to go from top to bottom, okay? I, for some reason, I can't go that way. I have to go from top to bottom. So let's see if I can do this on camera. Okay, this is um, kind of like a light sage green thread. So let's see how it works. Let's see if I can do it this way. Okay. So I, ha I have to always look at the book because I cannot ever remember. Okay, so we come out here. Okay. And then you kind of go clear across, okay, clear across like that, go in. So in other words, you have to kind of like, okay, I'm going clear across here, okay? I'll do a big one, how's that? Then you can see better. So I'm going to go horizontally across right here. So I, I need to look in terms of a V here, okay? And then when I come out, I need to come out at that V point. So, I'm gonna do a regular size one. Let's see if I can show it to you on camera. Okay. So I've gotten, uh, I went horizontally across. I'm coming out here. I have to make sure I have a loop there. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Now the key is not to pull it too tight. Okay. So what happens is instead of this stitch going across, this guy is keeping it down, okay? And then I do the same, I just keep repeating, but I kind of go maybe twice this way and then I go this way maybe twice or once. So I'll do that again. Okay. So make sure you're in that loop. And I'm gonna come out. And don't pull too hard, okay? So it makes that really cool design and it kind of looks like that. So I'll do a couple more. Put it on my lap. I'll go uh, across again. Okay, so I went across. I'm still going to the left here. Okay, so I got three. Now, um, if I keep going this way, just gonna go this way all the way. So now I just gotta move to the right. I'm gonna go there, oops. Now you gotta keep that loop there because that loop is, you know, going through that loop is what's going to hold that stitch in. So I went to the right this time. I'll show you what happens. Okay. So, okay. So now it's going in that direction. So I'll do that again. Okay, actually it looks like it's merging with this one down here. That's kind of cool. I could do that. All right, I'll fudge that a little bit, make it merge. Okay, so I just accidentally connected the sample I just made with right here, okay? And then I came out all the way over here. Let's see if I can do one over here, oops, that loop has to be over there. And you can kind of vary the size. So maybe I'll try to do a little tiny one this time. Okay, let me move to the right. Let's see. Yeah, I keep forgetting I have to keep that loop. Oops. I got it twisted. 
if you get your, um, okay, this is what happens. Oh, that might be a new type of stitch, but I twisted that loop right there. So it just, instead of a pretty V, it just made a mess here. Let's see if I can fix that. I went the wrong way, I think. Yeah, I always have trouble with this stitch. Okay, so I made a tinier V. Okay, I'm gonna make a couple of tiny ones just to show you what it might look like. Oops, not that way. This might be easier to do it on a hoop, to be honest, because then you can stabilize the fabric a little bit better. It's going all over the place right now. Okay, I'm just gonna do a couple more, a smaller size, but in one direction. So you can see what it looks like if you don't go back and forth, you know, across. Okay. So what happened there is I just kept going in one direction. So it just kind of doesn't have that same effect as um, these guys. So if I didn't like that, I can just undo it and rethread my um, needle. But what I think I might do instead and see what happens if I go in to the left. All right, let me. And I want to see what happens if I overlap the other stitches that are already there. If I just go across and run right into them, see what that will look like. Okay, if you have different color thread, I think this will work. Um, mine actually is a slightly different, well, yeah, it's a slightly different color thread, but it is not as contrasty. So um, it looks like the same color thread, but this might work. Let me see. Okay. So what I did here was Okay, I went this way and then I went this way, but I kind of went right over this existing stitches and it doesn't look that great, but I can keep adding more in between and that might work out, but I may have to take this out. Let me look at it from here. I mean, it's okay. I guess it's not that important. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna end it right here. And then if I don't like it later on, I can undo the stitches, just cut them off. Okay. So right now, this is what it looks like. And, if, and I think I may have to undo that because it just doesn't look too good. Yeah. All right. So what else can I do? Let's see. I was thinking about now, Keep in mind, these are just temporary basting stitches. And then I thought, well, I could add, definitely looks like I need to add something in here, okay? So you look at it and you go, it just kind of, you know, needs something here. So, you know, I could just have regular lines here to indicate fur, all right? And I can do it in white thread or contrasting darker thread. Um, probably a light color thread, okay? And you've already seen the antlers, you know, what I'm doing there. Um, and then this part also needs something. So this is the second layer of fabric. I could cut, yeah, and uh, yeah, I think I like that right now. So I'll just do that right now. First I'll mark it for pencil because um, otherwise, I might get confused as to where I'm supposed to cut it. So I just use a regular soft leaded pencil. Maybe, maybe I'll cut it. Okay, so this will be the fold line where I'm drawing it. Maybe I'll make it like a heart shape. Okay. 
And it doesn't have to be symmetrical. So I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. So maybe I need an opening like that. Yeah, maybe I do. Okay. So um, I used to just use these snips to cut open, and then I accidentally cut through the two layers of fabric. So what I'm going to do is use the seam ripper. Well, it's still grabbing the back fabric. Yeah, this part's hard to do for me. Okay. I'm just going to make a little hole there. And then uh, let's see. This part's a little bit tricky because I have to, this sharp curve right here, I have to make a lot of notches. I guess if you accidentally cut the fabric underneath, you can just um, change the design, you know, or patch it up somehow. I mean, you shouldn't get stressed out over this project. It's it should just be a fun, relaxing thing. Um, make sure you don't have a deadline to meet. That's no fun. Okay. All right, so let's see. I hope I have enough snips here. Okay, you don't wanna snip all the way to the line, just um, close enough. Uh, let's see if I can turn this under. Okay, looks like I need to snip more here. Now, let's say I did this and I didn't like it. Well, I don't see why I can't just take the same color fabric and patch it with an applique. And then you can stitch around it, make it an interesting design right there. Okay, I'm gonna try to turn this under. It's really hard to turn these tiny pieces under. And I'm using my little short applique needles. Uh, they really, this is probably a good purchase. Yeah. I've had these for years and never used it. Um, or used it only a few times. I didn't think, you know, I thought, well, I don't really need these. But now I'm seeing if I do this kind of stuff, I really do need it. Okay, let's see if I can turn this under. Now, when you're turning it under, you might think you don't have it perfect, but don't worry yet. When you start stitching it, you can use the needle you're stitching with to really turn it under some more. Okay, I think I need to snip more there. These really um, tight curves, um, you do have to make a lot of snips. Okay, so I've got a curve right there. Let's see if I can get that needle to scoot in the fabric. The more you snip, the prettier the curve. I've got a tiny, tiny little place here. All right. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. Okay, and then if I did the whole, if I stitched the whole thing, it'll have that thing. I think that's that's a good one. 
that can add some stitching around it after I finish it and embroidery thread. All right. So let's see what that looks like. And um, none of my threads are matching. I'll try to match this one. If you don't like threading your needles, um, just take a bunch of needles and thread each one with the different the different colors that you're going to use. And that way you don't have to stop and keep re-threading something. Okay. So I've got this little guy right here. So I'll just put, keep the knot in the back. And come out really close to the fold. Oops. Yeah, see this? Okay. Oops, that one didn't go through. And then once again, real close to the fold, tiny, tiny, especially small areas like this. You really have to keep those stitches small and the distance between each stitch really small. Okay, so right here, this should be a nicer curve. I'm gonna take that pin out and then see if I can scoot that fabric in a little bit more. Okay, now, oops, I must have. Looks like I accidentally sewed into the chain stitch. Let me undo that. Okay. So you are using a single thread, okay? You get a much cleaner um, end product. And also when you have to undo something it's it's you know you don't you don't want to use that double thread okay i'm trying to scoot this little piece in there using the tip of my needle and try to tuck it under okay now we're getting to that tight curve so when you're sewing this um you're going to do one part, look at it, says, you know, what else does it need? And listen to your gut instinct, because um, that's going to tell you which direction you should go and what you should do next. And, you know, if you come to a point where you have no clue what you should, you know, you should add or what you should do, um, just stop. And if you have a place you can put this like on a wall, like push pin it to a wall or somewhere. And when you walk by and look at it, you know, something will click and you'll go, oh, it needs a little bit of something here. So it's just like working on a painting. You leave your painting on the easel and, and it's going to uh, tell you later what, what needs to be done. Sometimes when you work on something for too long, um, you don't see the big picture. Okay, so it's getting there. Um, I do like this reverse applique method. It's a lot easier than regular applique and mainly because you can just tuck in the fab, uh, the fabric edges with your the tip of your needle. I mean, you can do that with regular applique too, but I, I'm just not that good at it. 
So for me, this is a lot easier. And the fact that I can just cut layers and, and you know, add designs that way is, is kind of fun too. Okay, so last week we did the chain stitch, the back stitch and all that. And today it's that feather stitch. Um, I'm probably, I probably don't do anything beyond those types of stitches, mainly because this isn't really a embroidery piece. I'm not doing a embroidery sampler. I'm just doing, um, you know, I'm just adding a little bit of texture and interest to um, this work. What I might do here is I might add a few beads just to give it a little bit of something and a little bit of 3D-ish effect, even though this is kind of 3D already. Um, what am I going to do with this piece when it's done? It's probably going to be a wall hanging, but if you're ambitious, you can do like a, this can be the center of a bedspread. It could be a cushion cover. Um, you can even probably do a table runner, you know? And the whole thing doesn't have to have the mola on it. Just certain sections could just be on the table runner. It's gonna be thick and kind of um, bulky. So keep that in mind. You might not wanna put, you know, like a candle stick on, on this on the applique part. Okay, so that didn't take long, you know. Um, it, it is a small area, but it really doesn't take long. And I actually have a little heart shape on this guy. Okay, so let's look at this what I've done so far. Okay, so I've only got one side of its face. Maybe I should move it here so you can see it better. Um, so he's got a heart on its forehead and he's got the eye and I've got this massive brown area and I think I'm going to fill it in with this grassy pattern. At least that's what I think I'm going to do right now. Um, but I'm probably going to continue to I'm probably going to add like interesting stitches here and maybe even here around here. Definitely the ears need it. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do here. I don't know if I'm putting nostrils or what, but it needs something. I might continue to add these uh, white stitches, another uh, three rows here. Um, Maybe I can do some diagonals, you know, like those African cloth. Okay, diagonal designs on here. That might be interesting. And also, I might take advantage of these open space, uh, these uh, spaces, and put French knots or little stitches. So you can just keep going on and on and on. And actually, the more you do, the more interesting it's going to be. So I highly recommend, you know, start with a smaller project, although a smaller project it's going to be harder to do the tiny areas, okay? Because then you end up with a lot of tiny things. Um, so if you do a larger piece, don't uh, keep in mind, you can fill it up with all kinds of stitching that it's going to texturize your background, okay? So um, I don't know. I think this is going to be a, a good, uh, fun thing to do. I didn't like it at first because of the brown colors, but as I'm adding the greens to it, it's starting to pick up. I'm not sure if I'll be adding any other colors at this point. It's gonna probably tell me later what it wants. And then once I remove the basting stitches, it's probably really gonna be a nice piece. Um, don't know what I'm gonna do with this, okay? Um, so remember the original um, people off on the island, San Blas Island in Panama, uh, put this on their garments in the front and then they would, you know, remove it once, you know, they just stitch it on the front and on the back. And then they would, they would remove it and put it on another garment item. Um, this might work. I don't know if I want 
this on the back of a jacket, but it might work, you know, something a little bit different design. Or you can take a jacket and do this reverse kind of um, applique stitching. That might be really cool. It doesn't have to be the whole jacket. It could be just be like on a cuff or something. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed um, this um, series and we will see you some other time. Thank you. Bye.